And what they say about mullets, everybody? Business in the front? It don't work like that with this face. With this face. It's very much missing child's poster in the front. And then guy who kidnapped that kid in the back. Like. Yes, Canada, what's up? Yeah. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Saul. Uh, I don't care about pronouns. This is me personally, because I got called ma'am from behind the other day, and I didn't correct anybody. I was at a Burger King. I left that out in the ether. The kid behind the counter was like, ma'am, your fries are ready. I didn't turn around and go, ah, uh, I'm a boy. No, I said, give me those goddamn fries, you know? And then I walked out of that place with my head held up high like the bad bitch I was, okay? <laughs> so I'm sorry if you've never had Lizzo energy as a man, but I had that shit, all right? I knew what it was like to feel immortal in 2023. That's right, ladies, we were out here. I don't feel like I have to explain the mullet as much in Canada, but I will, because people, <laughs> people aren't used to it on a Mexican face. I go, I don't know. In Canada, it just means people go bonjour a lot. I go, uh-huh, I don't know what that means. Yeah, hello. In the United States, people assume you're from Texas. Like, oh, I'm Texas, right? Nah, man, this is a, I'm from Northern California where all the, most of the food is grown. So this is a cherry picking mullet. This mullet is very agricultural. If you shop organic, you're welcome, all right? And what do they say about mullets, everybody? Business in the front? It don't work like that with this face. With this face. It's very much missing child's poster in the front. And then guy who kidnapped that kid in the back. Like, I just wanna see my kids, okay? Please. I'm a minimalist, you guys know what that is? A couple people, if you don't know what it means, it's just hipster for poor, okay? No, it means I don't care about stuff, possessions. Like, I like experiences, JFL. Y'all are good experiences, good experience. A weirder example would be the shoes on my feet. Now, these are some normal Pumas, 45 bucks. My wife had to buy them, because if you leave me to my own devices, I am such a minimalist, I will buy cheaper shoes than this. I go to Walmart, I buy $9 shoes. Those don't even come in a box. They come in like, like a bin, loose, like almonds or beans, you know? I find the left one, I gotta excavate for the right one. People think that's weird. You know what I think is weird? Shoe collections. And I'm not speaking on any race or sex, specific genre of people I grew up with, sneakerheads. Some of you might be in here. Yeah, yeah you weird me out. <laughs> you never in your life wear the shoe for what it's for. You're never waiting in line at the store for our shoes and then three days later, I'm gonna do a layup, see what these fritos are good for. Like, you're gonna wear those to a potluck or an outdoor wedding. Those shoes will never see a basketball court, but they'll always be around potato salad, okay? Those are your coleslaw Jordans, let's be real, all right? You guys don't understand. $9 shoes from Walmart, they make stepping in dog shit so liberating. You do that with a pair of Jordans on? Nah, you got a whole project you don't wanna do. You gotta take the shoe off, you gotta get a pen cap or a twig. You gotta solve a goddamn maze, all right? I don't wanna do that, I'm at the park with my family. $9 shoes, I step in dog shit, I hop right out of them like they just broke. Like, fuck those shoes. Those shoes don't work anymore, you see that? They malfunctioned. I walk right back into Walmart, no shoes on. Nobody bats an eyelash. Like, that's regular here. Come on in, friend. We see the, we see the toes, big boy. Come in for the deals. And then $9, I'm back in the game, baby. I'm back in the Matrix. I will commit a crime in $9 shoes tonight. Go right back outside, I'll commit a crime, and then I'll put that shoe into a bag, throw those into a fire, those are burner shoes, okay, that's all. Those are the cricket wireless of shoes, that's all those are. Better example, you think if I were to become rich, I'm gonna buy shit like a Lamborghini or a Range Rover, nah. I'm gonna buy 16 Honda Civics and just crash them as I go. Oh, no, no, that's not my problem no more, that's Winnipeg's, I gotta go. 
Hey, bring out number eight, nine, because number eight is down. And then helicopter, Honda Civic. Look how rich I am, huh? <laughs> um, earlier, I think I, I said wife, and I feel like a lot of you are like, like, like a human lady? Yeah. <laughs> human lady. I love my wife. I owe her a bunch, you know, because I didn't take her on the best honeymoon. We've been married for three years. She loves tropical stuff. I'm a comedian no one knows about. I can't afford tropical stuff. But I thought, you know what's the same as tropical stuff? A cruise. It is not. <laughs> it is not by a lot. I am not a cruise person. And I found that out before I got on the boat. There were cruise nerds in front of us reading from a pamphlet. Information no one gave a fuck about. <laughs> Did you know that our boat is four times bigger than the Titanic itself? I got upset because I started looking around all the people. I was like, well, it has to be because people are four times as big, all right? You don't gotta laugh at that, but you take a good look at me. I shouldn't go on any vessel and feel like the bell of the ball, all right? I was top five hottest guy on that boat. And top 10 hottest girl, let me tell you. I was out there. I was out there. Ah, I went to the pool, I swam with no shirt on. That's not right. I'm shaped like a Ziploc bag full of marinara, all right? And when you're shaped like leftovers, you swim with a shirt on out of respect, all right? It's a black shirt and you let the chlorine take it. And those are the rules. But I was out there, chichis everywhere. I didn't give a shit. If I felt a little bit self-conscious, I would just look around a little bit like, nah, I'm fine. I'm fine. You can still see the bones a little bit, you know? You guys don't understand, man. You guys remember the time, some, maybe you saw the Leonardo DiCaprio Titanic, or maybe they, they made, I don't know. When people went out to dinner, they wore nice dresses, tuxedos, violins were being played. On my Carnival Cruise Line, I swear to God, some lady in a ras rascal scooter, she had tubes in her nose, she was like, I chose this boat because Guy Fieri's got three restaurants on it. <laughs> I got, I, I don't pray, but that night, I went back to my cabin, I got down on my knees, I said, dear God, sink this fucking ship, okay? <laughs> this is too much, where's the iceberg, Papa? This is, you gotta kill everybody except the Filipino help. They didn't do nothing to nobody, all right? <laughs> but everybody else dies, please. I did that for five days straight, nothing happened. And if you've never been on a Carnival Cruise Line, that is just a Greyhound bus station meets a hometown buffet, all right? <laughs> There's too many adults with backpacks on and there's mashed potatoes everywhere for no reason. <laughs> that make no damn sense. Do love my wife. She's the best. I mean, she, she sucks my dick, so. <laughs> Do you hear this voice? Imagine this voice in any sexual scenario. Yeah, girl, put that thong to the side. That, that's not right. But she does it. Before we got married, I had an older married couple. One of the, the husband pulled me aside. He's like, say goodbye to blowjobs. Those are done. My wife's a pioneer. That's what it is. I get two a week. Two a week I get. My wife sucks my dick like a scientist checking on a reactor. Like, the levels get too high. People are gonna die, okay? I'm telling you. How do I explain this? My dick's like a pistachio. You gotta work for the meat, okay? But as soon as you get past the shell, you're like, no, pretty good, I like that. I like the flavor on that a lot, you know? I just wish there were more in the bag. Hey, my name is Saul Trujillo, everybody. Have a good night. <laughs>